I am talking to uh, Loïc Guillon today. I, I, I believe that's how you pronounce your name, right? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Dirk. Okay, yeah. Loïc uh, is the... Um, I have to get this right straight away because uh, he's the... He is the Honorary Council for France for the Midwest region in Ireland. So can you tell us what does that entail? What what does that title entail? Sure. Um, well, I'm basically representing the French Embassy in the Midwest region of Ireland. Uh, there are a number of Honorary Councils uh, of France in Ireland. I'm just one of four now. We uh, there is one that who was just appointed in the region of Wexford um, only last summer, which shows how the relationship between Ireland and France is dynamic at the moment. Uh, there was the need to have one more, one extra honorary council. So the role is to represent the French embassy on a daily basis in the region, and uh, perhaps the most important uh, part of the role is to assist French national who reside in the region or who visit the region. You have about 800 to 900 French nationals who reside in the Midwest region, as I do. And so my role will consist of um, administrative assistance, handing over passports, ID cards, signing a few documents for them. And you also have about 70,000 French tourists who visit the Midwest region every year. Was that many? That's, seven, that's, that's a lot. And that's only uh, part of the half a million French tourists who visit Ireland every year. Uh, so as you can imagine, there are always things happening. And unfortunately, very often, these are serious incidents like accidents, visits to the hospital. It can be death sometimes, unfortunately, mm. you know, uh, uh, so whenever there is an emergency situation like that involving a French national in my region, I'm called to assist them as best as I can. Okay, well, that sounds like a very um, um, important uh, job. So uh, I, I know there used to be um, an honorary council for the Netherlands in, uh, in Limerick as well, but for some reason the Dutch government uh, has decided no, everything has to be done to the Dutch embassy, because now, even if I have to have a passport, whatever document, I have to go to Dublin. I can't even ask them to I have to go to Dublin to the embassy. So that makes it a bit more difficult. Yeah, it's it's nice that you have that the French people here have someone like you then in the in the vicinity uh, who they can address. So that's 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 good. Now and it's only part of the job, um actually, because the other part of the job is also to represent the embassy to the local authorities whenever there are events you know the ambassador uh, or colleagues from the french embassy cannot be in the midwest region all the time so whenever needed i can represent the embassy for uh, to the local authorities for particular ceremonies for example uh, and um, the role also involves promoting the uh, economic and cultural links between France and the Midwest region. So it's a pretty versatile and, and varied uh, role. So you're a busy man. <laughs> yes, it keeps me That's what you're saying, right. you're a busy man. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. No, but, because that kind of links into, uh, uh, I suppose I can call it a passion of yours or some uh, a project you're involved with. It's with the Patrick Sarsfield's uh, history project, I, I understand it is. Uh, so... I know there's a good link with with, the, with that that historical era uh, with, between Ireland and France as well, and of course there's a bit of a Dutch history as well, giving uh, the, the especially a Limerick with where the Limerick Treaty was signed with the with the Dutch fella, uh, Prince William of Orange uh, or William the Third, I think it was. So there, there is that connection there. So, but what is what is your interest with? Um, Patrick Sarsfield, and what's the project you're uh, involved in? Well, that's a project I launched uh, four years ago now. And um, basically, when I became Honorary Council of France in Limerick, I looked at the history of Limerick and uh, tried to see what would connect it to France. And that's when I came across the um, episode of the flight of the wild geese and of the whole siege of Limerick and the signing of the Treaty of Limerick as well. 
So the wild geese were those um, Irish Catholic soldiers who fought alongside the French back in 1690 and 1691 against the uh, armies of uh, William of Orange at the time. And um, following the uh, second siege of Limerick uh, and the defeat of the French and Irish troops at that time, the Treaty of Limerick was signed. And thanks to the, the Treaty of Limerick, uh, a certain Patrick Sarsfield, who was the leader of uh, the uh, Irish Catholic soldiers, was allowed to leave Ireland uh, with his uh, soldiers and with their families uh, uh, and to keep their weapons. And the aim was, of course, to go and carry on the fight on the continent. So Patrick Sarsfield left Ireland in 1691 with about 12,000 of those uh, soldiers who became known as the Wild Geese. And most of them ended up settling in France. Patrick Sarsfield himself uh, ended up serving in the French army, becoming a quite high-ranking officer. So when I came across that particular historical episode, I decided that this common history should be promoted. And that's when in 2019, just as I was appointed as honorary council, I launched the Limerick Wild Geese Festival, which had been an annual feature of uh, Limerick summers uh, since then. And then the name of Patrick Sarsfield came uh, coming back all the time, and you can see it everywhere when you live in Limerick, of course. And I thought, but where is Patrick Sarsfield actually buried? And that's when I found out that nobody knew exactly where he was buried. He died following the wounds that he sustained during a very important battle, the Battle of London, in what is nowadays Belgium, in the service of France. It was actually a French victory at that time, but he was severely wounded and uh, nobody knew exactly where he had been buried. So four years ago, I decided to embark on that crazy project and try to go back to all of the historical sources, not to take any versions of his death for granted and yeah. try to find evidence as to where he might have been buried. And that was the beginning of the Sarsfield homecoming project. Well, that's, uh, yeah, I mean... Uh... I, you, you probably know I'm a bit of a historian myself, even though my uh, interest lies more and a bit more modern history, like World War II. Uh, but yeah, the fact that this, this also this Dutch link there as well with with William of Orange, and um, I'm not sure should I be proud of that bit or ashamed because uh, yeah, uh, let, let's be honest, it's it, history. It, he he wasn't a, a a great guy for for Ireland or 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 even for for Scotland as well. I think he was married to uh, Queen Mary at the time. That's the link, that's how the link was there. Now, um, yeah, he, he, he said you said you found where he was uh, he was buried in 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 Flanders, I understand, in in Belgium. So, and did you did you could you verify that's actually where, where that is his real burial place? So all of the evident and circumstantial evidence that I found that I ended up finding after a few years of research points out to the fact that after being wounded at the Battle of London, which is in Flanders, as you indicated, he was transported to the city of Huy, H-U-Y, in what is nowadays Belgium, which is in the Walloon part of Belgium nowadays. And uh, I managed to... Um, zero in on uh, an area which uh, used to be an old church, the church of uh, St. Martin's in Huy, uh, where he is extremely likely to be one of the two anonymous French officers who were buried there in the months of uh, August 1693. And so the next step was, of course, to find out whether that church uh, was still extant uh, and to see whether we could um, access the site. And the church actually was destroyed. A house was built on top of it. There is only one wall of that church remaining nowadays. But, and that's um, perhaps a sign of destiny, uh, I found out that the house in question uh, was at the time, two years ago, in the process of being purchased by the uh, city council of Huy. And so I contacted them and they say that once the uh, purchase would be completed, they would be happy to grant us access to the site. And the house is to, act, to be demolished. So we were given the possibility of conducting archaeological excavations on the site. Okay. So we started with the most accessible part of the site, which is in what is nowadays the cellar of the house. 
which was built just above the floor of the ancient church. And then if we don't find uh, the remains of Patrick Southfield on the cellar side, we will have to move to what is nowadays the back garden of the house and, and carry on the search on that side. Okay, that's, that's, um, that, that's, see, when I first talked about the Southfield project, I thought that's kind of a, a, a side project, but that sounds like there's a lot of work uh, involved, uh, a lot of uh, thinking uh, gone in there as well. So yeah, that's, that, I mean, is it, yeah, that's fascinating really, because I know Southfield, Patrick Southfield himself was actually, he wasn't a Limbic man, he was born in Dublin, and, and, and I think his, his parents actually, they were they were English, uh, but they moved to to Dublin where uh, they, they got a, a, I think he was a sir as well. They got some kind of title as well. So, yeah, his uh, he, his uh, ancestors were coming from uh, uh, from the other side of the Irish Sea, but uh, yeah, yeah, they had been uh, settled in Lucan near Dublin for quite yeah. a while when he was born. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And it must have been kind of strange that time as well, because uh, from English ancestry, but yet being be Catholic, uh, so that uh, yeah, that, that, that there's a lot of uh, a lot of aspects to uh, to the man. Now, do you have any other projects planned now? Because that there is other links between France and uh, and Ireland as well. Of course, I know there was some battle uh, in Mayo where the, the French were. Really involved, and I I understand it's probably on the same time as well. So, have you ever looked into that? Yes, we, well, the French embassy, of course, looks at every uh, aspect of uh, our common history between France and and Ireland. And you're right in saying that uh, it was last year that uh, we commemorated the uh, year of the French, uh, 1798, when uh, General Humbert landed in uh, County Mayo, and when the very first Republic of Ireland was actually uh, founded. Uh, it didn't last very long. The uh, English sent their troops and uh, crushed the rebellion pretty pretty quickly. But that was, in effect, the first time that a republic was proclaimed in, in Ireland in 1798. Um, we've got plenty of projects. I'm working as well. I'm a member of the board of Alliance Française in Limerick. Uh, Alliance Française Limerick is part of a worldwide network of uh, language and cultural centers teaching French. It's a not-for-profit organization. So we provide French classes to uh, Limerick people since 1944, would you believe? We yeah. uh, celebrated our 80th anniversary uh, this year. Um, and as part of Alliance Francaise, we also organize a range of cultural events um, throughout the year. And one of them being the Limerick Wild Geese Festival every summer. Yeah, I, I think I missed it this. Well, no, I, I don't think I, I'd miss it uh, this year. So when, so next summer is the is the next one. one what's the ex, actual date? So it's always um, on the weekend closest to Bastille Day, the French National Day. So next year it will be on Saturday, the twelfth, and Sunday, the thirteenth of July. July. Okay, that's that's good to know. I, I, I'll I'll make an effort to make sure I'll uh, I'll show in have a show in that, that time as well. So yeah. It was great talking to you. Um, I'm sure we'll be we'll talk again because it's yeah. Uh, as, as I said, I, I'm I'm interested in history anyhow, and of course, yeah. Uh, I always had a bit of a even though if, if I'm not, I've never been to France, but I always I always like the idea uh, of France. Uh, I only passed through it once, but that was going to um, to England via via the ferry. But actually, I've never. Uh, been in in France. I, I mean, I, I lived about three hours away from Paris, uh, so that that's actually near than more than a lot of French people are. But I, for some reason, I I never I never got got to go there. So, but well, you know, Dirk, you're somewhat even closer now from Paris than you were before because thanks to the flight, the Air Lingus flight from Shannon Airport direct to Paris Charles de Gaulle, you can yeah. fly anytime. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, uh, when I was living there, I could go by car and train. I was still uh, ah, yes. <laughs> But you know, uh, exactly. I mean, I have to go there uh, someday, but I have so many other things still to do. But yeah, uh, again, thanks for, for this. And we will Thank be you for having again. me. Yeah, and success with, with, with your other projects. Thank you. Thank you very much.